Sometimes I want to store a list of values instead of just one value. Um, imagine if I want to represent a thousand items and I have to declare 1,000 variables to do that. That's kind of out of hand. Um, so in programming, there's a concept of a list and uh, we call it an array. So here's how you make one. Um, you choose the type of information that you want the array to store. Now you are restricted um, to one type. So if you want to store integers, um, your list will be made for integers. It'll only hold those. If you want to store strings, then your array will be made for strings and it will only hold those. So let me make one, um, an example one. I'm just going to call it list. Um, and then I have to add, right now it just looks like a regular integer. To show that it's an array, I put square brackets with the total number of elements I want to store inside there. So if I want a list of five items, um, I'll say int list five. And so now what that means is the name or identifier list refers to basically a place where I can store five separate items. The way that I indicate which particular item I want is to use an index number. So if I want to store in the first element of list, I will go to index zero. Um, in programming, numbering of lists of things always begins with zero. So if I want the first item, I actually go to index zero or address zero. So let's put a value of five in there, okay? Um, if I want to go to the second thing, I can put a two in there. I can go to the third thing. Let's put a 99. Let's go to the fourth thing. Put a eight. And the fifth thing. And put a six. Okay. So now inside of my list is a five, a two, a 99, an eight, and a six. Um, I've made myself a little helper that shows me a picture of what this looks like so you can envision it in your mind. So um, this is not by any means a built-in function, but let me just call it. I made this thing that will draw a picture of it, and I'm sending it to the list and how many items the list has. So you can see a picture of what this thing actually built. Okay, so here we go. I've got a list of items. On the outside here, I have their index numbers. So the first element is zero, the second is one, the third is two, the fourth is three, and the fifth is four. Inside there, I have my five, two, 99, eight, and six stored. So if you can imagine this in your brain, it's a list of items, um, each with its own numbered address so that I can access all of them, okay? So you might say to yourself, well, what happens if I don't give these guys values? So let me, comment out the lines where I assi assigned um, the first two elements values. And let me call my little function to draw these again. Let's see what comes out in the first two. Oh, it's my old friend, the garbage value, negative 858993460. So just like with a regular numeric variable, if you don't initialize what's in your list, it has garbage in it. Okay, let's try another experiment. What happens if I try to get to an element that doesn't exist. So let's try to go to element five, which doesn't exist because there's only five total. So my numbering only goes up to four and try to shove a 99 in there. Let's see what happens when I try to run this. Okay, it doesn't seem like anything bad happened. Oh, but here we go. Runtime check failure, stack around the variable, list was corrupted. So when I put that 99 into list five, I actually messed with an area of memory in the computer that I had not set aside. Um, that's dangerous business, so we don't wanna do that or your program will crash, okay? Similarly, let me close this function call. If I try to print out an element that doesn't exist without using um, whatever, so let's try to print element five, let's see what comes out on screen. junk, okay, because there's no element five, so that's just a junk area of memory. Um, so I have to be careful to stay within bounds, or what I'm getting is called a, an out of bounds or a range error. All right, what else can we do? We can take um, the item that's in one spot and put it in another. So if I wanted to take this five and move it into um, slot with index two here, I can go like this. So it will take whatever was in the first element and put it in the second element. Let's verify that that happened. We should see two fives in this list now. Yes, there they are. Five and five. Okay. Um, what I might want to do 
instead of having to manually set these, particularly if I have a lot of elements, like 50. I don't want to do that manually. Um, I can run a loop that sets them. So let's do that. Uh, equals is always my number is going to start at zero and it's going to go up to, um, but not include how many there are. Okay, so let's say list i equals, and just like when we initialize most numeric variables, it's nice to have them at zero so we know what's in there. Let me tell this guy there's now 50 to print. Let's see our picture and verify that they are all zeros. Bam, they've all been set to zero. Yes, indeed. All right, um, so I can use a loop to set them to something. I can also use a loop to um, give them values. So let me shorten this back down to, let's say, five. And I'm going to actually let the user enter values. Um, and then I'm going to have my full list. So let's ask them, enter value. And then let's grab their answer. And the way I grab it in is the same way I'd print it out. I tell it to go to my list and go to a particular element. Now I want the element to change, so I save all my numbers and don't overwrite them. So I'm going to make that I. And I will leave my picture down here, and that'll happen after I enter all the information. So let's try this. Let's go. 99, 44, 55, 22, 88. There they are, in the right slots of the array. So all my items are in there. Um, as you might imagine, in your mind, to draw this picture, I have a loop that's visiting each of the elements and printing them out. I also have it drawing some little chars around it to make those lines. Those lines aren't really going to appear unless you force them to, though. Okay. And just to prove to you um, that it's possible, you can make an array of strings. Let's do that. Uh, my function wasn't built to draw strings, though, so I'm going to delete that. Let's just make a list of three um, and say list zero equals red. Oops. List one equals blue. List two equals green. So I can store strings in there the same way. You might say to yourself, but I hate doing this line by line because um, I'm a programmer. I don't want to keep hitting the enter key because every key press costs you time. There's a shortcut you can use to initialize values, and it's this. Uh, you just leave the size off here. You put an equal sign, and instead of listing these guys out, you put some curly brackets, and, oops, wrong ones. Mm -mm -mm. and in between them, you put the list of values you want to set the list to have in it. So I can put red, comma, green, oops, comma, blue. And now um, red is an element zero, green is an element one, and blue is an element two. So those are arrays, which are pretty darn useful for storing large amounts of values.